My greetings to everybody watching this video right now. I am Damini Ritika AG and I am currently pursuing my bachelor's in electronics and communication engineering. The climate crisis has already been solved. We already have the facts and the solution. All we have to do is to wake up and change by Greta Thunberg. Yes, I would like to start my speech with this positive note on dealing with climate change. I'm going to talk about the role of technologies on dealing with climate change. The carbon dioxide levels in the atmosphere is rising rapidly, which in turn affects the global warming. And these in turn affect the climatic changes. So what is the solution for this problem? The solution is sequestration of carbon dioxide. Yes, sequestration. It can be done either directly or indirectly. The direct way is to capture carbon dioxide directly from the power plants and then pressurize them into liquid and store them in porous rocks for a longer period of time. And the indirect way is to capture carbon dioxide into vegetation, woody products, soil, and also in aquatic environments. We can also capture carbon dioxide through various other carbon capture systems and then send them in pipelines to remote sites where saline aquifers and depleted hydrogen reservoir could act as a storage system. Clean production, clean production of energy is a must in this period. In order to breathe a toxic free air, the first step of implementation is vehicles that run on electric power. And that electric power should be obtained from renewable sources of energy such as solar energy, wind energy, bioenergy and geothermal energy. The production of clean energy has to be complemented with proper storage. Thanks to technology, Storing clean energy isn't as big deal as we think. Power 2X is one of the greatest way, coolest way to store energy. For example, run the electric current through water and collect the hydrogen molecules that break off from the water molecules and store them in fuel cells. Moving to hydrogen can create huge impact across various sectors and is one of the best ways to decarbonize the global environment. I have an interesting fact for you guys. Using green hydrogen, uh, okay, a company, a Sweden-based company has created a green dump truck. A dump truck that is made up of green steel with the help of green hydrogen. Hmm. How many of you are aware of the um, thing that the world is rapidly urbanizing? Yes, that's true. Over 50 percentage of human population is residing in urban areas that comprise of just 3 percentage of total land mass. To accommodate the growing population, we need buildings. We just don't need buildings, but we need sustainable buildings, such as green buildings. A green building is something that is operated, built, renovated, and functions in a sustainable way. I mean, in an environment efficient way. The thing is, we need to believe in this process. Especially the people in developing countries should believe in this process. They need to know to advocate for, for the kind of city, for the kind of infrastructure, for the kind of buildings that they believe they need. Belief is the base of everything in this world. Now, I would like to mention a few examples for sustainable buildings. One such example is the Pixel Building in Melbourne, Australia. This building functions 100% carbon free. And you know, even hospitals could be built sustainably. One such example is the Koo Tech Pot Hospital at Singapore. Now, I'm going to tell about three innovations that will help us in developing buildings. The first one is automated building management system. If we apply this method, then we could 
save drastic, tremendous amount of electric energy. And the next one is innovating a window insulator. Mm, this functions this way, like um, it keeps out the heat during summer and traps the heat during winter. The third and the most important method is vertical farming. This saves a lot of space and minimizes the amount of energy and water used for irrigation. Yes. This could be incorporated uh, using aquaponics, aeroponics, hydroponics for better plant growth. And also, I would like to mention something. The beauty of nature is even microorganisms help us in this process. Organisms such as Clostridium, microalgae, and cyanobacteria are useful to create biofuels. Public transit in Brazil and Argentina are worthy to mention here, and also their biofuel innovation. The scientists at the Purdue University in the states of Indiana in the US have created a ultra white paint using barium sulfate. And this could do away with the need of air conditioning. Now, I would like to mention different technologies in different fields of life. The first one is a technology in agriculture. Biotechnology and genetic engineering tools such as CRISPR-Cas9 could do wonders to create better variety of plants, crops, seeds, even at adverse conditions. The scientists at Argentina are working towards developing a green, I mean like a backpack for cows. And these backpacks are used to capture methane to power the refrigerators at home. One cow could produce enough methane in one day to power a refrigerator for one day. Cool statement, right? And we can also use remote sensing technologies to monitor the vegetation and get to know the problems if there are any. And the next one is a technology used in industries. industries. At a place called Tutikorin in the year 2017, the in, one of the industries applied a method. They captured the carbon which is emitted from the power plant and converted it into baking soda and thus making a carbon emission thing into a commercial process. Some industries, some iron and steel industries use a specific process called the BOFRH process in which the carbon dioxide gas which is emitted is converted or it is reduced and otherwise used for other purposes. Now I'm going to talk about the technology that could be used in laundry system. Devising water washing machines that consume less amount of water using bleaching technology and also innovating um, compact washing tablets could save energy and minimize power. The next one I'm going to talk is about the technology in electronics. In the year 2020, wait, did I say 2020? It was that year that we went crazy about corona. Just kidding guys. But if you are watching this video, then you have nailed it. Coming back to the point, in the year 2020, there was one survey that was conducted, I mean like, okay, it stated that over 3.5 billion people across this world use smartphones. Yes, the number of people are huge. And from this statement, we know that we need better eco-design, sustainable choices for raw materials. Bio, bio, they must be biodegradable and should be recyclable for better prospects. Hmm. Even green computing could reduce carbon footprint. This April, MasterCard partnership with a Swiss-based fintech company I'm sorry, a Sweden-based fintech company, Dokonomi, in creating an integrated carbon calculator. This way, people get to know the amount of carbon footprints that they leave across online portals or apps. Coming to the end of my speech, 
I would like to conclude by saying this one statement. We all should unite in matching our words with action and reduce the yawning gap between pledges and delivering them and thus strive to make this earth a better place to live in with the use of appropriate technologies for today's need and for tomorrow's future. Thank you.